Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get straight into it. I know I haven't done it for a while. Um, I've been busy. Thank you very much, Michael uh, Wang. Michael Wang, Silent H, um, from San Jose in California. Hi to all my viewers. In San Jose, out of time. Yes, we're, yep, still there. Just checking. I don't know. Lab's a mess. Let's see. This sent in. All right. All right. We have a note. This is a circuit I've been working on for a while. Whoa. Hello. That's a PlayStation controller. It is a genuine PlayStation controller. Um. Okay. Whoa. Servo Shock 2 server and I/O controller. Cool! Ah, oh, oh, tons of little servos! They're always useful. Awesome! Let's check it out. We've got a bunch of servos. I just love playing with servos. They're great. Um, and an Arduino. And, oops, there's why you uh, probably did it have the foam pad in and it fell off. Anyway, when you're shipping uh, stuff like this with extended pins like that, yeah, make sure you put some foam over them. Anyway, uh, we've got an arduino -y, um thing. Looks like yeah, custom designed with the servo controller. Nice. I like it. And um, they've got LEDs on there just to uh, show you all the individual channels, I'm sure. Powered from the batteries and we just get our, and, and it's got a, a USB and a wireless um, adapter in there, presumably, and it hooks up to a Sony uh, DualShock 4 wireless controller to control the servos. Oh, that's very cool. Anyway, um, here's the extensive uh, manual for it, which I'll have to link in down below because it's got a whole bunch of, uh, you know, stuff about uh, pairing the controller for Bluetooth, all that sort of jazz, and it's actually very... Impressive. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. Probably how to calibrate. Adjust center dead band. Yep, yep. Something like that. How to calibrate them and all that uh, sort of jazz. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's play with it. And thank you very much, Mike. This um, was, is, was a Kickstarter because it's finished now. But hey, he's going to make some more. So if you want one of these cool little babies, you can get one. I'll link it in down below. Okay, let's see if we can get it to do something. Uh, it's already pre-programmed. Mike very thoughtfully... Whoa, whoa! It, it something moved, tried to calibrate them, and uh, with the Bluetooth adapter, apparently we just press the PlayStation button here, and... I don't use the PlayStation, so I don't know. Does it turn a solid blue? Yes! Blue, green! There we go! Oh, so it's connected. Here we go. Let's try and uh, use the controller. I can hear them. I can hear subtle movements. <laughs> oh, wow. That's very cool. Oh, that's great. Look at that. So they're all connected to the uh, thumbsticks there are connected to the one channel. And, and of course, they are completely analog proportional control. Fantastic. Oh, no. There we go. Trigger buttons. No. I guess they're the only ones programmed so far. But yeah, you can go in there and program that. So isn't that cool? That is just... Oh, ooh. I swear I can hear a couple of them just sort of... Yeah, I can feel that like micro stepping back and forth. Trust me, I can feel that. So it'd be hard to see. But uh, yeah. Oh, because it's got the... Oh, yeah, look. Tilt. Tilt controller. Awesome. I don't know. I don't play PlayStation games, but it's obviously got a tilt controller. That's great. Oh, that's a big button, is it? Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. See, I don't bloody play PlayStations. Look at that. It's great. <laughs> anyway, this is the kind of product that I love. It is purpose designed. It's got all the correct uh, servo um, uh, you know, pin connections on there for, you just buy your hobby servos for, what are they, a couple of bucks on eBay or uh, something like that. It's all purpose designed and it just, like, battery supply in and out to, you know, and it connects up to a couple of different controllers, um, I believe. But yeah, the PlayStation 4, and it just does that. It doesn't pretend to do anything more. 
fantastic. And of course, you can get in there and tweak it all and stuff like that. But I love purpose designed products like that. That is great. And of course, it's uh, stackable on the Arduino like that. You can actually see these buttons map into LEDs over there and these ones as well. But obviously, they're not uh, programmed to do the motors, but you could. Um, you could just program it to do any damn thing you like. So that could, you know, not only be used for uh, using a PlayStation to control your, uh, like a little a robot or whatever, or maybe a little uh, remote control thing. Bluetooth doesn't have a, a huge range, so it's not going to go very far. But um, all sorts of like, you know, in, industrial, like a quick and dirty, or maybe not industrial, but well, you could, but like a, a quick and dirty uh, test jig that you need to um, do something. You need to control something just as a one off. And oh, yeah, there we go. The button press as well. And there's a close-up look at the main board here, and it can do a lot more than what I've just shown there. You have to watch their uh, Kickstarter video to get an idea of what it can do. Not only can you actually program it from the uh, PS4 joystick itself, but you can uh, configure it so that the buttons are not only uh, like normally open, normally closed, but they can do single shot, they can do toggle. It's got uh, drive modes for uh, like a differential um, geared uh, robot like differential gear remote control cars and stuff like that so I can all do that sort of stuff like out of the box and also uh, you can program it so one of the digital inputs from the Arduino here can actually uh, actually make the rumble motor go inside the controller itself so there's a huge amount of flexibility in this side inside this thing go check it out it's awesome hi it's Fran again um, yes you should know Fran Blanche Hello, video blogger. If you haven't subscribed to Fran's channel, highly recommend you do. And she sent in. Ta da! Ooh. Oh, that's colourful. Ah. Oh. Fran Lab Choice merch. Fran Lab shirt. I assume you can buy it on Fran's store. Awesome. Check it out. It's very cool. It's even got the original red and blue uh, layer traces. I like that touch. Very nice. Oh, for those who don't know, red and blue were the like traditional tape film colours that you used to do. I can remember doing PCBs with tape. You'd actually put them, like lay tape down and donuts and you had the cutouts and the bishop graphics and all the other stuff. That was very cool. That was, <laughs> yeah, I was still doing that in the uh, 80s. So, before, uh, you know, like, uh, geez, when did like say Altium come out, Protel, the original, well, it wasn't Altium back then, it was called Protel. Oh, thank you very much, um, Sinotrans, I don't know who Sinotrans is, um, from uh, Guangdong in China. Oh, look, um, yeah, the original Protel. Oh, look, isn't this nice? Wow, presentation box, the original Protel. Um, lovely bow. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, from Sigland. Thank you very much. I don't know who Sinotrans is. I don't know. Is that a subsidiary of Sigland? Um, but uh, to Dave. Oh, <laughs> Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Sigland. Thank you very much, Sigland. Um, yeah, this is the is this the first mailbag this year? Really? It's like ridiculous. Anyway, oh, blue and white. Okay, we've got a carry bag. Oh, look at all the foam. Anyway, oh, look at this. I'll tell you the Oh, look, it's a tea set. A Siglent. Siglent branded tea set. Lovely. Awesome. Mrs. EEV, I don't drink tea myself, but uh, Mrs. EEV blog will love that. Isn't that neat? Wow, thank you very much, Siglent. In a nice, lovely presentation box. Beautiful. Anyway, Protel, yes, um, came out talking about Protel with a tea set. Well, you know, this is the EEV blog. Um, while I'm sipping my tea, hmm, ah, very lovely flowers, wow, excellent. Um, Protel came out in 86, 85, 85, I think, which is the first, first version of Protel for DOS 1.0. Um, I started using it when it was 1.61, I think, um, and Easy Tracks. Uh, did it have the same serial number? Anyway, I don't know. Why I'm getting sidetracked into that, i got no idea. Um, thank you, Siglin. Thank you very much, Ben Van Etten, 
I have that correct, from Bakersfield in California. Jeez, it costs a lot of money to send stuff. I mean, this doesn't weigh anything. Look, it's in a little thin thing. And sure, it's priority mail, but it's like the United States Postal Service. And it's like 34 bucks. That's Yankee bucks um, to send that. Unbelievable. Um, so thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate everyone who sends stuff in. Because people don't... <laughs> I chopped the note again. Gotta stop doing that. Uh, yeah, it's um. People don't realise how much it costs to send stuff. Like I get a lot of uh, comments, um, like, "Oh, can I um, send someone and like an old oscilloscope or you know a bit of old gear or something like that?" Um, and uh, yeah, I do give away. I've given away a lot of gear and scopes and stuff over the years and meters and stuff. But especially a scope that's big like this, it costs more to send it overseas than it does to buy it locally. It would actually be cheaper for me to simply buy it on eBay in their country and have it shipped to them locally than it would for me to ship it overseas. Um, it's just... Um, but yeah, I'm surprised at the cost for like just a simple thing like this. Enclosed, you will find three modules. Awesome. Let's check them out. They're little, some sort of power thing. Power aficionado, stick around. So Ben Van Etten has uh, sent this in. Thank you very much. I'll link in the Amazon uh, product page down below. Uh, designed by Graham Lawrence, by the looks of it, uh, in the UK. He's an electrician for over uh, 20 years, or um, uh, Ben Van Etten is. Um, and a simple device uh, was created to help Arduino and Raspberry Pi developers more easily and quickly integrate AC power monitoring into their designs, both standalone module as well as a concept starter module, etc., etc. Anyway, I checked out the product page and there's not, unless I'm absolutely dumb, I couldn't find uh, like this diagram or any sort of uh, instructions. All I got was uh, like some sketch examples and. Uh, stuff like that. So it would have been nice to have the uh, schematic and everything else. Anyway, here's the board. I like the little Austin Projects uh, logo and the <laughs> thumbs up picture on the back. That's great. Nice. Um, but it's basically just a uh, mains optocoupler interface, the uh, MID400 chip. There it is, uh, which you can replace, of course, if you blow the arse out of it. Um, and basically you've got mains in here and uh, it connects either to a Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, um, A, there's a lack of um, any sort of uh, silkscreen labeling on the board. That's the first thing I noticed. This um, header in here is actually a, a future pin header. At first I thought, aha, that's the same pin out as the Raspberry Pi with the power and the two grounds in the AC, but it's not. Um, so it's not designed to like you know, plug directly into the Raspberry Pi. It's not a hat or anything um, else. Um, so a shield or whatever. So yeah, I'm not sure that's the most user-friendly way. And uh, once again, there's no labeling on here. It's got the high voltage warnings, of course, but it doesn't tell you that, uh, you know, look, this is AC mains, um, 90 to 240. This is great. It tells you everything. It's got a blue light, can run from five volts or 3.3. Uh, and it's basically just uh, two high value resistors, um, one either side that's good rather than just have one. So even if your mains wiring is uh, back to front, you're still gonna be uh, safely protected by the high wattage, uh, high voltage axial resistor there, as long as you don't touch any of this side, of course, um, or this side. Um, should be relatively low and of course it's just an optocoupler and here's the uh, data sheet for it but I once like I can't quite figure out the valve like it's a line monitor but you can't really monitor like the analog mains waveform for example it's not designed for that uh, because it's got the digital output you could uh, of course um, detect that the mains is there or not you can measure the frequency and things like that um, but apart from that um, you know it's not like you can actually monitor the line voltage um, so yeah you can detect that the mains is present and the frequency but that's about it and I don't know if they have a matching project for driving uh, like mains uh, like stuff, you know, using your Arduino as a controller, because that's what this thing's for, you know, detecting the mains. You want to detect it for some reason. And then you probably want to have a companion uh, board or project to actually control the mains in some way, you know, like if you detect mains or at a certain zero crossing point or something, you want to do something or other. So yeah, um, it, 
I don't know. It's just a basically just a um, optocoupler on a board with some high value protection resistors. Unless I've missed something. And it comes with some uh, bigger resistors. Um, if you want to do uh, like a three phase of voltages and stuff like that, higher mains voltage. But the standard ones will do uh, 90 to 240. And I just downloaded the uh, sketches for this. I didn't actually hook it up to the mains and test it. I'm sure it uh, no doubt works. But all it seems to do is, as I thought, just um, detects that the mains is off or on. And it outputs that to the serial port, mains off, mains on. So, um, yeah, okay. It's good if you want to do uh, mains detection. That's fine, but not hugely useful for uh, much else. And this is really annoying. They're doing it wrong. I had to register. I had to put in my name and email address just to download the sketch. No! So I guess depending on how you uh, hooked it up, it could be uh, good to detect that, say, something has been actually, a mains appliance has actually been switched on or uh, something like that. Depends how you wire it in configure. But there's no, like, example information uh, that I can find on the website or uh, uh, all we've got is the just the one page. So, yeah, more info required, Austin's Projects. Thank you very much, S. Bukes from Durban in South Africa. Hi to all my South African viewers. Ah, oh, there we go. We don't get many stamps. There we go. Haven't shown stamps in a while. Cool. All right. Okay, let's go. That Aussie bloke. It's not that crazy Aussie bloke. I can, people still remember that. I don't think I even have that on the web page anymore. Um, yeah, this looks just like a note or something. No, there's something. Oh. Ah, oh, cool. Look at that. Wow. It's a Propius, um print, is it? Or a... I love, I'm into uh, Egyptian stuff. This is very cool. Holiday, saw a mailbag that you're interested in uh, Egyptania. Is that... Is that the name for it? If so, yes, I am. Um, so I thought there is a present from my aunt Izzy in Egypt. Awesome. Uh, another suck on the sav, whatever that means from South Africa. A suck of the sav. I say that a lot. A second suck. If you're having a second suck of the sav, it means you've sent something into the mailbag twice. That's what it means. It's an Australian expression. Suck of the sav. You know, it's either a fair suck of the sav, which means, uh, you know, fair go kind of thing, which is kind of like the Australian... Uh, you know, way of life. You know, everyone is entitled to a fair go, a fair suck of the sav. And a sav is a battered sav. I won't go into that. Google it. Um, and yeah, fair suck of the sav. And if you're having a second suck of the sav, means you're um, sent something in twice. Oh, Sean B on the forum. Cool. Um, would have typed it on a typewriter, but using a PC is now so much easier than hauling it out and setting up the daisy wheel. Yep. <laughs> cool. There you go. It's, uh, paintings are on papers made out of, uh, papyrus. Propi I can't even say propyrus. I mean, papyrus. I, I don't even know if it's correct, but, yeah. That is very cool. Thank you very much. I like that. That's a winner winner chicken dinner. I forget who this one is uh, from because it's all in um, Chinese, but um, I was alerted to this. I accidentally opened it because um, it didn't have like mailbag or anything on it. I thought it was something like I ordered, um, but I didn't take it out of the box because I immediately saw it's a, what it was, and I think I was alerted to email. It's a time frame. I'll show you what it is. Let's have a look. Ta-da! Let's, oh. Ah. Got to unwrap it. Hang on. Right. It's like... Oh, oh, look. It's, <laughs> it's a do-it-yourself kit. Um, but I think, it, from memory, it's been a while. It's been a month or two since they said they'd send this in. Sorry, I still don't remember your name. Ah. But it's a do-it-yourself kit to make a, oh, oh no, that's a roll of wire, ah, oh, it's a kit, it's a kit, obviously we won't have time to assemble a kit on the mailbag, I know that kind of sucks, um, but it's, anyway, I, what I'll do is I'll link in if there's photos or video on the, uh, thing, I'll link it in, here, I'll edit it in. Hmm. Awesome. Anyway, this looks very cool. I've got a little helper. Say hi, say again. Uh, 
There he is. Hello. That's better. That's, That's better. heaps better. Now, what are we going to do, Sagan? <laughs> What's this? A soldering iron. A soldering iron. Awesome. Yeah. And we go. You don't know how to solder yet, do you? No. no that's all right. But I've seen Daddy do it before. Yeah, yeah, you have. I've but seen Daddy do it. Yeah, I'll I'll teach you when you're a little bit older. Yeah. Okay, because these are a little bit delicate. Yeah. So we have to solder these together. Mm. Okay, we're gonna solder them all in parallel. Let's go. I think I might need a chair. Excuse me, everybody. <laughs> Mr. Flashing Knight. <laughs> There is a flashing light in the corner. Yeah, why do I always have to do that? Well, it's a little bit annoying. Yeah. It's faulty. I've got to fix it. See these fumes? You don't want to breathe them. Uh, rosin. Rosin comes from tree sap. Did you know that? And we want to wire them all in parallel. You know about series in parallel, don't you, Sagan? Yeah. Because you build up circuits at home, don't you? Yeah. Lots of cool stuff. I I can't radio. Yeah, you I build can't, a radio. I can't um. You can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember all the ones. Uh, it's hard to keep track of all the ones I've been making. Well, what we're going to do, Sagan, is we're going to get Daddy's old kit out that he had when he was your age, and we're going to see if we can build up some circuits with that. That'll be yeah. fun, won't it? Yeah. Wire it up in parallel. We're done. So we can turn that off now. That looks parallel. Yeah. Thumbs up. <laughs> Two thumbs up for Daddy's soldering. All right. Now we have to attach them on the inside of the box and then it lights up all inside the box, but it doesn't just turn them on. It flashes them at a really fast rate that you can't yeah. see. Flashes really quickly and that's what gives it the time machine slow motion effect, yeah? It's gonna be cool. All right. So it's completed and built. There we go. Sagan helped out and um, let's give it a try. But I need some sort of flower thing to put in it. Something that's, you know, nice and floppy to get the time effect. And no, I can't use a three and a half inch floppy disk. Hmm. Huh. Actually, just for kicks, why can't I use a floppy disk? <laughs> it's not, they're, they're actually pretty like um stiff in turn like because they're what are they so you know mylar uh sheet or whatever um but yeah i don't know i'll try it out i don't expect it to work at all and it's the wrong orientation so nah. and no i don't think it's going to be able to do this sorry about the flicker nah there's just there's just nothing i can do i'm not going to get the i'm not going to get the time machine effect with this i suspect what a bummer. Worth a shot, but the floppies ain't floppy enough. Okay, I'm in a uh, corporate business park here, so the best I can do is this. I don't know what kind of flower that is. I don't know anyone out there, any aficionados out there can tell me what that is. I've got no idea. Anyway, it's not as floppy as in like a rose or whatever, but let's give it a go. I should have held it on with a rubber band, but I've got a cable tie. She'll be right. Let's give it a bowl. Woohoo! Look at that. Oh, it's designed to give like a slow motion effect. And check it out. I can actually slow this down until it looks good like that. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. So that's actually the light, of course, uh, strobing at the same um, a point every time as the vibration frequency of the reed of uh, you know the magnetic reed in here and that's what's causing them to sort of subtly move like that because they're flopping around you gotta have a floppy item like a real soft rose or something like that and it will actually vibrate that <laughs> it's, it's just great trust me it looks much better in real life than it does on camera. It actually looks, you know, very impressive. There you go, there's a close up of the real time on this. You can tell it's real time because my voice is uh, over the top. Well, you're gonna have to trust me, aren't you? But uh, yeah, it, <laughs> it adds that real slow motion effect. And of course I can slow that down or speed it up. <laughs> it really is quite neat. So it's basically just a stop motion picture frame and it does really work quite 
Well, even with like a really uh, quite a stiff little uh, flower like this one, if you had a real nice loosey goosey rose in there, yeah, I'm sure it can, would be very impressive. So I'm I'm thoroughly impressed by that kit. It went together uh, reasonably well, and it works as claimed. And as I said, uh, you really got to see it in real life to uh, you know to get the impression of this. Um, it's a shame that they didn't link the uh, the vibration rate to like a standard uh, 25 or uh, 30 hertz or you know 50 or 60 hertz uh, camera. So it doesn't matter what. Um, frame rate I choose it's just it, you know I can get it a bit better I can slow it down and stuff like that but it's still not terrific so thank you very much for sending that in and I'll link it in down below if you want one because it, it's just it's just great it's novel I like it yes this is uh, 12 frames per second <laughs> I just like playing with it it's great I think this could be a blinken rocket I, I just, I don't know what gives me that uh, impression. But thank you very much. Uh, hack, um, hackerspaceshop.com. Awesome name. Email root at hackerspaceshop.com. Um, open here. Here we go. I won't make a full on it. Yes, I will. No, it's an easy open. Yes, it is. A blinking rocket. Sounds like a kit. There it is. Yes. Let's check out. Oh, we've got a patch. No, sticker. <laughs> National Security NSA monitored device. Yes, I need more monitored device stickers. Awesome. I'm going to whack that on the back of my phone. You bet your ass I'm monitored. So are you. There is no cloud, just other people's computers that are being monitored. <laughs> Let's check out the Blinken rocket. Thank you very much, uh, Florian. I'm sure this is a second suck of the sav, isn't it? Um, Have we seen... I don't know. I think we've seen a different... Rocket, let's have a look. It looks like a rocket. Even get a battery and a googly eye. Gotta have a googly eye. Awesome. And um, it looks like we have a lead matrix here. It's not an RGB one. I actually developed a uh, little project once, which I never finished, which was a, God, that was eight, nine years ago now. Something like that. Um, that was an RGB version of this. The PCB was no bigger than this. It had all the drive circuitry. You could interlock them into a matrix and all that sort of jazz. I should try and drag that out of the archive. Anyway, anyway, it's a do-it-yourself soldering kit for kids and young adults to teach SMD soldering schools. Uh, also, rocket-shaped PCB. No programming, no software, none of that BS. Um, just go to blinkinrocket.com. Upload directly out of your browser with generated sound from your headphone jack. Ah... Hence why we got, no, that's just a cord. Um, but we got, eight, oh right, you just plug it into your phone jack. That's great. That's how you, awesome, I love it. None of that USB rubbish. Anyway, um, it, yeah, you just plug it in and what? It does a spectrum thing, does it? Anyway, something like that. Cool bananas. And they're also selling other kits at hackerspaceshop.com. Um, my daughter Mona is six and we started, uh, sold her the kit last week. I guess Sagan is, yeah, Sagan is actually six. Um, I haven't taught Sagan to solder yet. I still think he's a bit young and he is like scared of like, like it's hot, you know, and stuff like that. I don't want to pressure him into like learning to solder. Like he loves building circuits and things like that, but you know, soldering is just like a means to an end uh, kind of thing. So I definitely wouldn't do um, SMD. I definitely wouldn't start him out with SMD. God, I hate the black solder mask. Hate it. Altium scarred me for life on the black solder mask. They're reflected. You can't see the traces. Anyway, I don't mind a nice matte black, though. Um, a bit the shiny gloss black. Anyway, uh, yeah, I wouldn't start saying out um, on a surface mount, of course. That's uh, way too much. Going to start him out on a through hole. When I do teach him to solder, but uh, that's nice. We've got a what's that? A 0.8 millimeter uh, pitch uh, quad flat pack there. We've got some like uh, 1206s, some 0805s, SO8 package. Perfect uh, sort of, and a couple of uh, through holes, of course. The um, display itself is through hole, and a couple of other through hole parts. Nice. That's what you want for a little surface mount soldering kit. Love it. Thumbs up. Anyway, um, I won't assemble that in today's video. I'll leave that maybe for a a uh, second channel video, but check it out. Thanks, Florian. Thank you very much, Michael Dittrich. Uh, Len... 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 Lengid? L-E-N-G-E-D-E. -E. I, 
hopeless. Anyway, Deutsch Post. Hold on, one of my German viewers. Um, this one might be because of a recent video I did. Uh, it is a... Oh, look at that. That's schmick as. Wow. Look at that. It's a four-wire... I'll show you a close-up. It's a short... It's world's easiest circuit, but it looks nice. Well, I think Michael wins the award for the nichiest of niche products here. It is literally a four-terminal short plug. I, I just love the concept that it has um, the um, zip-tie... Uh, pull to pull it back out because it does require a lot of force to pull out four banana plugs like that. So yeah, uh, hopefully they're not the dicky ones. Are they the good ones? I've done a video on that. You remember that? Or oh, let me have a look under the mantis. Yeah, no wackers. Those ones look pretty schmick. And let's have a look here. 19.05 millimeters. None of this 19 millimeter rubbish. A lot of people just round it 19 millimeters. It's often near enough. Anyway, that's the, um, uh, anyway, it's uh, CC something or other. Can't read that, but uh, it's all open source. <laughs> because, yeah, of course. Make your own. Awesome. Um, I guess the only thing is, I would have, like, soldered them on rather than uh, screw them on. Because technically, the uh, contact resistance could be a little bit iffy, depending on the pressure of the uh, screw and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, neither here nor there. I'm sure it's going to work just fine. And you can just see the traces under the bloody white solder mask. You can just see them, the sense ones go. Actually, they're all for, they're actually all four connected like that. Shouldn't be like that. Shouldn't be like that. You should at least sense them. Probably like, can cut the trace on there and just sense straight across there. It's probably not going to make a rat's ass of a difference, though. But, um, yeah. Anyway. So let's plug it into the Keithley down here and give her a bow. Got four wire ohms. I've got the, uh, like, you can speed it up. I've just got the uh, filter. Oop, bloody thing. Bloody touch screens. Uh, yeah, it's super fast updating, so we'll just... Oh, God, come on. There we go. There we go. Um, what was that? Uh, 200 micro ohms, is it? 280 micro ohms. If I put pressure on that, oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's going right down. So that's interesting. Let's turn the filter off. Wait, oi. Whoa, don't breathe on it. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I fart halfway across the room and this thing's going to change. Just put a... Yeah, now is that the, um, those, uh, the type of banana Jack used, the lantern type? Or is that... Uh, that'd be interesting to see the difference between the lantern type uh, banana jacks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the ones with the swivel ones, they look like a lantern thingy. That's why they call them lantern type. Um, and is it to do with those? Because technically they might not have... Well, there's more contact in the path than there is for the other type. So, oh, can I get it right down? Oh, so that's interesting, isn't it? Let's try it on the Keysight 7.5 digit. Whoa, the first thing I noticed is that this is ridiculous. There was no force on that. This is, it, it's basically not making contact. The lanterns are not going in there. So, ah, oh, bugger. Um, it's like, oh, maybe I don't have to chop off the uh, cable tie there, but it's like, they, they haven't, like, these are recessed further in there, and it's like it doesn't make proper contact. Anyway, there we go. There we go. We're down to the, you know, similar sort of range. Like, um, of course, the, this, uh, the Keysight doesn't have as great a range down there as the Keithley does. Has a lot more resolution down at that low end. Wow. But, yeah, I've, I've really got to put the pressure on that to sort of keep it in contact. Hmm, interesting. So, actually, then, you know, there's probably a lot more um, art in designing a four-terminal shunt than what it looks like, because this has some variability on both of these. Actually, I just noticed, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it, you've got to, got to get the light right. You can see the big fat trace going from 
uh, the input high low down there. So the input high and low is uh, shorter together, both top and bottom, by the way. Um, but the sense isn't going over here, which you'd expect. You expect the sense high to go to the input high like that, but it's not. It actually shorts out sense high to sense low like that, and then shorts it over in one place. Now that's interesting. Is that the best way to do it? I this is open to debate. Um, like, do you want to, I guess it probably is that you want to sense the two shorts because then the, then it's truly reading zero, but then you do want to measure the actual short properly using the four wire terminal. So I don't know. Hmm. Interesting debate. Discuss down below. Hmm. So, cue the vault nut discussion on that one, I suspect. It's an interesting one. Thank you very much, Circuit Mess in Slovenia. Um, Slovenia. Hi, all my viewers in Slovenia. Um, wonder how many I've got. Probably not a huge amount. Um, but, sure they're, uh... Oh, cool. Check it out. Ah, uh, it's a little... Have I got two of them? Oh, I got two of them. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the Make Arduino do-it-yourself gaming console. <laughs> Neat. Let's check it out. Forgot to mention that comes from um, Albert uh, Gasek. Um, thank you very much. And it's actually made in Croatia. Check it out. And did I call that a Make Arduino? It's a Make Arduino. We and classic Space Invaders official Maker Bruno <laughs> license product. I, I can't wrap my tongue around that. Ages 11 plus. Let's check it out. It's obviously not for me, according to Mrs. EV log anyway. I'm about the same age as Sagan. Good on you, Albert from CircuitMess.com. I love the name, CircuitMess. And yes, it is face tracking on the photo. As it turns out, they were pretty successful on uh, Kickstarter, and I'll link it in down below, of course. I'm sure you can still buy one. Um, and they raised, uh, they had like 1,500 backers, raised over 100k. So awesome work. And they sent, kindly sent in uh, two kits, which, by the way, if you're, oh, there you go. It's got a handy carry strap. Which, if you are going to send in uh, kits, I often don't have the time to uh, sit down and assemble the kits um, in time for the video. So I generally put them aside for when I have idle time to build kits and stuff like that. So um, yes, please send in a, as they've done here, send in a fully built one so we can show it working and a kit. But isn't that neat? Um, I, I don't like that they've just got the blue. Ah. It's a real disappointment because I love my red PCBs. Anyway, matching red buttons. That is quite nice. Uses the Nokia. Um, what is it? The 5110 or the 3110 or whatever it is. Um, uh, LCD, which you can... What is it? I think it's 96 by 96 pixels, if memory serves me correctly. And uh, you can get them for like two bucks on eBay. Micro SD card. We've got our souls and Atmel something or other in there. Got a speaker. Got lithium ion battery. Bob's your uncle. And how do we turn it on? Oh, it'd be nice if these were labelled. These should have been labelled. Um, and you should do that on the PCB. And we've got a couple of knobbies down here. Got to love the knob. No. No. Hey, there we go. Look at that. Ah, Bobby Dazzler. It's got all these games built in. Let's check them out. What's that? 101 Starship. Oh, jeez. There's lots of them. Bricks. I... There's, oh, wow. How many games in this thing? This is incredible. And we can set up, like, once again, these aren't, none of these switches are late, uh, button. Yeah, it's just got, on the silk screen, it's just got button. Um, it doesn't, there we go. That's better for contrast for the LCD, isn't it? There you go. Change name, adjust screen to contrast, backlight, etc. Delete game, play game. See, I don't know which is, like, the back button. Right, so, yeah. Would have been nice to label those. Is that Space Invaders? Yeah, Yoda's Invaders. <laughs> okay. Play. Play. Cleaning. <laughs> cleansing? Was that cleansing, E-squared prom? 
<laughs> Love it. Loading game. Jeez, it's taken a while. That's interesting, but uh, yeah. I, I assume that the Atmel process is run at the full like 8 meg or whatever. Um, let's, I don't know how to do this. And I don't know these games, are they like, um, I presume they're like open sourcey type things. A, play, C, which is the A button? Is this A and B? I don't know. See? There, 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 there you go. No worry, no workers. Okay, go, 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 go. Ha <laughs> ha, come on. Hey, did I miss one there? What did I miss? This is great, I love it. And do it yourself kit. What more do you want? This is terrific. Jeez, I'm doing all right, aren't I? Not too shabby. Yep. Ah, I missed the ah, I missed the mothership. Hang on, I'm trying to. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> awesome. It's the game console that you assemble, a kit that is customizable and hackable. Awesome is cheaper than a newly released AAA game. I don't know what a AAA game is, but uh, like, you know, like a Xbox-y, PlayStation-y game or something like that. I don't know. Getting started guide. Oh, there you go. There you go. Button A, button B. Should have read the instructions. Would have been nice if, they, if that was on the uh, silk screen with the um, USB LiPo charger. I squared C interface. It's cool. Um, in circuit serial programming port. What? Oh, there. I thought it was pointing to that button. No. Nah. Um, turn the console on. Charge it using a mega regular micro USB. Great. Learnmakerwino.com. So let's check out the kit. We've got our uh, dip eight. Um, it's all. Is it all through hole? I think it was all through hole, wasn't it? It's all. Uh, yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's all through hole. Fantastic. Oh, this surface mount rubbish, and the blank board, there you go. Cool bananas. I like it. That's worth your dollars. Nokia 5110, there it is. Yep. Important note, solder the microcontroller and the SD card before soldering the screen. Yeah, that could ruin your day, couldn't it? Anyway, that looks really good. Layout looks really neat. No wackers there at all. And, ah, it's already attached. Great. Awesome work. Guys, that is terrific. So thank you very much, Albert, for sending that in. I'll link it in down below if you want one. And I'll have to take this home to say again. Well, I don't know. I've got two. I'll have to build the kit and uh, give one to Sagan to play. Although I don't like him playing the uh, playing the video games. Mrs. E V blog will be most upset if I bring it home. But you know, I think I, oh, I can't stop paying attention. <sighs> anyway. Thanks to everyone who sent in something to today's mailbag. And as always, if you like it, please give it a big thumbs up. And I'll try and do more because I've got a whole bunch of um, ones that is just sitting here on the shelf. Um, yeah, give it a big thumbs up. Discuss down below. All that sort of jazz. Catch you next time.